Welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Chaosmos by Vigor Games, including the expansion coming out, Chaosmos the Temple. And we're going to be discussing the majority of Chaosmos, but as well as additional features that you're going to find in the expansion that we've actually gotten a chance to play. We'll tell you all about that, as well as show you all the new components, some of the new expansion content, a bit about how to play the game, and then we'll come up and I'll explain the game a little more into detail and tell you what we think think about the new and exciting expansion stuff in the game. As you can see, I'm already hyped about this game because you probably already know from my live streams in the past that I really enjoyed Chaos Most. And if you like the base game, I think you should go ahead and check out what we're going to show you down below and then in my review. So here we have the game Chaos Most with some of the expansion contents for the game The Temple, which would be included in it when you pick up the game on Kickstarter. I have for the most part set up the base game, but with some of the added features like the new character boards as well as the alliance abilities, the new set of cards for the deck, and some other features, as well as, of course, there's a board for the game that will be included as well. This is the setup for the game, and it's going to be based on the number of players, as well as based on how long you want to play the game. In the middle is this chaos clock, there are planets, there are asteroids that will be set up, and then there are these little warp areas, which will each warp from one space to another throughout the board. There's also going to be aliens, and in the expansion, they'll come with three new aliens that you can utilize. One of them, which is being really cool, is one that doesn't actually help a home planet, which is kind of interesting, is more of like a wanderer. Additionally, there are these flag symbols here, which come in the base game, and I believe the expansion is going to have some flag meeples or flag uh, miniatures, which is kind of cool. Additional planets, tokens you'll be utilizing as well as expansion tokens. There's the cosmic pool and the void, things that you're going to be utilizing for additional cards and things you have to discard. There's the new Chaos Most deck of cards, which has been changed to be a little bit less fit. I suppose, and some other unique little mechanics, and of course the Ovoid and the Dark Ovoid, because in Chaos Most your objective is to find the, basically the Ovoid, and have it in your possession at the end of the game. There are certain characters that change this, but for the most part that's the basic idea. There's also going to be ciphers uh, that tell you whether the Ovoid is real, whether the Dark Ovoid is real, real, which is an additional concept to the game that you can add. There are player hidden screens that allow you to hide cards while you're looking at them, because each planet has their own unique storage uh, locker, per se, that comes with this little thing here. And inside the planet envelopes will be your home planet's envelope, as well as other envelopes with new and interesting cards in them that you're going to have to go and dig through to find out where the Ovoid is throughout the entire game. Uh, like I said before, the new player boards are going to be consistent of the old ones as far as the fact that you're going to get hyper tokens, you're going to get the uh, ability to see what your main planet is and what the planet you're allergic to is, or the planet you're hazardous to, and then your unique abilities. There's also these cool ally abilities that you can actually get and attach to your board that will let you like stick them, attach them to your board to give you some kind of unique ability based on who you're pairing with. Additionally, the expansion will come with two additional players to the game, so you play up to six players with the temple, but overall that's pretty much the idea of what you're getting. There's the last thing, of course, which is the new Chaos Clock, which is as you're rotating this baby here, much like this one, there's going to be some interesting aspects, like these cards here, these are event cards, that will have events take place based on when it says for each one, and there's three of them that takes place between each third of the game, up until the point where the game ends at zero. So that's a lot of the new stuff of course in the in the new expansion as well it will come with a board for quicker placement faster gameplay but for right now i'm just showing you some bits and pieces of the expansion along with the base game for chaos most let's go ahead and i'll just take it down below and i'll explain basically how you would take a turn and how it, the game functions very very briefly because we're gonna have a lot of live stream stuff a lot of content for you guys to take a look at for chaos most the temple let's go so back down below now and i have it set up for three players just a brief uh setup so you guys 
guys can see what the game looks like in its uh, beginning state. Now, of course, with the Temple expansion, you're not going to have this board here with all the different tiles. You'll actually have a main board, which will allow you to do some interchangeable things with it, but it makes the setup a lot faster. But here we have the characters on their home worlds, and the home worlds are dictated by actually the symbols and the, uh, state, the, the, the statements here in each of these little areas here. So it's really easy to tell where they go, if not just by looking at them through the color. Uh, additionally, too, you're going to have here, which is the uh, the pool here, the cosmic pool set up for the six cards in the cosmic pool. You have the die, and you also have each character with a specific uh, screen that will not only tell people what that character does for the most part, but additionally let you hide while you're basically putting cards into your main planet's envelope. Now, every single character is going to get a certain amount of cards, and I believe it's ten, and they will be looking at their cards in hand, and you can put up to four inside the home planet that you start with because you have a hand size of seven. And you're basically just going to be moving around in the game. After you basically set up your planet deck as well as your hand, you're going to basically try to find out where the ovoid is. Now, of course, the ovoid will be shuffled in, and if you have it out here in the cosmic pool, you're going to have to reshuffle it again, make sure that it goes into at least one of these envelopes or a character specifically has it or player without actually knowing which person. And there's additional modes of play that can incorporate the dark ovoid, allowing you to play with both ovoids to determine which one is real and which one is not. But for the most part, these are just going to go into the deck and all cards will be dealt out into these binders here and to all of the players, showing that none of the cards remain other than the ones in the cosmic pool. So you're basically searching for that ovoid that's hidden amongst your friends or the pool here. Uh, then you're just going to basically start the game off by taking actions. And actions is fairly simple. You have three actions to do. One is to move, and you can move from one space to another space. Uh, another action could be hyperspace, where you'll spend your hyper tokens, as well as an action to move anywhere on the board. You can control a planet that is not already being controlled, and not the one you're already controlling. So, for instance, if I moved one, two, and I made my third action, I can control this area. When you do that, you're just basically going to take one of your tokens to symbolize that you have been there. That was one of the planets that you visited. You'll then take this envelope, replacing it with the previous one that you had. You'll look inside of it. You'll see if that ovoid is in there, and you can exchange cards freely, and you can leave it in front of you, showing that you own that planet, at least for the time being. Uh, another thing that you could do if you wanted to was you could attack, and to attack is fairly simple. If you move on to a player's space, uh, you can then choose to attack them. You'll use the cards in your hand, and many cards in the game will give you bonuses to attack, whether it's plus one or plus two, or some kind of combinational attack, utilizing more than one card, and your opponents will go back and forth. Attackers must win with at least one higher than the defender. Defender will win on ties, and if either player has plus one advantage, then that player will actually get to take a card from their opponent's hand and put it into their hand. So it will allow you to gain the Ovoid, hopefully, or other cards that will help you throughout the game. Another thing you can do is you can play a card from your hand. Some cards are basically free actions, while other cards will tell you whether they cost an action or not. Some may even cost more than one action. You also can trade with the Cosmic Pool. If you're on your home planet, you can simply trade a card from your hand into for a new card from the Cosmic Pool. There are times where really good cards will be in here, and potentially even the Ovoid itself, or Dark Ovoid. And then after you've taken your three actions, so if it was one, two, and then three to control this planet, you're going to end turn, and you're going to move this cosmic track down. Moving this track will symbolize the game ending, and depending on if you're playing a longer game or not, it'll either be at 48 or, I believe, 36 which is the shorter variant of the game. If you are playing with the Temple expansion, well, this is what's really cool about this thing here, is you'll actually be ticking this down, and at certain points throughout the game, based on the event cards, you're going to trigger an event, and you actually pull this thing out, you'll read whatever the event does, and then you'll put it back in play just like you would normally the original Chaos Mos. And you're basically playing until the clock winds down with three unique event cards uh, and multiple different types for the new expansion with this, the Temple Chaos Clock. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool if you ask me. And players will keep going like that. It'll take, go to the next person's turn after the, this person ticks. This person will move around the board searching 
fighting, trying to find that ovoid in order to win the game. I also forgot to mention too with these guys here, when you fight, you'll also be rolling these dies in addition to playing cards. And these die are pretty normal. They function like normal six out of die, except for there's a unique mechanic, which is this symbol here. That symbol is an infinity symbol or a mirror symbol by itself. If you roll this and roll this, the total is six. And this will mirror whatever number you rolled with the other die. And if you got really lucky and you rolled this, that is an infinity symbol, which means that you rolled infinity, which means you just straight up win the combat, which can happen one in 36 times, I think. So pretty sweet. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the base idea of the game. There's a bunch of additional content with the new expansion. And of course, even the base game has a bunch of unique modules, things like the barren planet, things like additional tokens and chaos tokens that you'll be able to utilize as towards different builds for the board or with the expansion, the main board itself and the quicker setup for the game, chaos most. All right, let's come up and talk about the expanded content as well as the base game if you haven't ever played. Well, first of all, in this game, you're basically just competing for either the Dark Ovoid or the Ovoid if you're playing with both of them. If not, you're simply just looking for the Ovoid, the mystical, magical device that controls all properties in the universe. It's, it's something that you need, and all the races are going after it, attempting to get it. And what's interesting about the game is it is a complete social deduction style mystery game. Now, there's no trade or anything like that, but there is somebody who has the information, and you need that information from those players in order to facilitate yourself winning the game because you have to have the ovoid in your possession at the end of the game now there are also some characters or aliens that will not need it or attempt to have everybody lose etc etc there are ways in which they are going to attempt to win the game in a different variant for the most part you're attempting to gather that ovoid save it if you have it early and then acquire it at the end of the game and make sure you keep it there's attacking that goes on and takes place throughout the game you're rolling dice you might get these infinite combos where you actually get the both infinite sides of the die or if not the infinite it dies turns into a mirror which is actually really cool as well you're either going to know quite a lot about what's going on in the game or you're going to potentially even know nothing and you have to go out and search for that information as you continually pr process what is going on what interaction are they doing why are they doing it and how do i learn that information there are cards in the game that will facilitate that as well you're going to be able to gather certain cards that will you scry other players hands and then there's also beacons that, or cloaking beacons that will actually let you hide certain cards from your hand when other players look and they'll get to choose between them to try and figure out what they have and what they can gather from you. There's the different movements that is uh, changed now in the expansion. The original game actually has these tiles that you place down to formulate the board and makes it all different. In the new expansion, that is drastically cut down, made a lot easier, a lot quicker to set up. The game is like three times quicker to set up now. You simply put the board down, put your aliens down, you gather your alien and you get your flags and all that and you're pretty much ready to go other than just the cards that you have in your planet. Otherwise, the other one used to be a big setup process with a lot of different variants. This one just pushes that all together, but puts it on a singular board. The expansion also comes with allies now. You can play with up to three allies. You just can't play with three allies next to each other, which gets some really weird things that could happen if you did that. So that's why you can only do two and two. But in that term, you're also going to have to deal with in a five player game, two people team up, two more people team up, and then there's one person left over. But don't feel too much regret for not actually allying because you'll gather certain cards if you don't gain allies during certain parts of the game that will help you in some way and they're actually pretty strong cards but of course I think allying is probably the best way to go if you can think of something like rising sun as far as that game goes you want to have allies but if not there's still at least some benefit you'll get in this game as opposed to that one for not actually allying uh, which makes this a lot better as far as that goes than that one it's, it's irritating because like if you ally you get bonuses but if you don't, you don't get bonuses. And in this one, if you can't ally, even though you mostly will want to, you'll get a bonus because you're not in that alliance. And alliances, if one person has the over at the end of the game, you will both win, provided you're playing with the right alien races. Additionally, there are the alien powers. And you'll be able to use your warp token as well as an action to flip over your power, which is a permanent power that goes throughout the game. It's very useful. And each alien has its own unique power as well as ally powers. When you ally with somebody, you'll give them theirs and they'll give you yours. Uh, they'll, they'll give you theirs. And then you'll be able to each use your own allied powers. And they're very powerful. They help out in certain ways. And they change the game just enough, but not too much to complicate anything. And it's a nice touch of, I want to ally with him because 
because he knows this information or maybe no one knows any information i want to pick him or her because she specifically has an allied ability that will really help me throughout the game even though she might have the least amount of information there's the doom clock and you know how that works it just spins around the board and once it gets to zero that's it game's over who has the ovoid well in the temple expansion there's three different parts to the game that will not only let you ally during those periods in time but also something unique will happen that is a permanent effect that stays in play maybe a specific card is less strong or more strong or maybe some type of ally bonus happens or maybe perhaps i don't know there's more asteroids added to the field it just changes things up just a little bit but enough to make a difference and it's also interesting because you don't necessarily know when those events are going to take place because as you rotate the clock down you're going to start to figure out that oh it's actually coming a little later in the round or maybe it's a little sooner because each ability functions differently and overall that's a really exciting feature to this game we played this game live quite a while ago but i never actually reviewed it but i have a lot of fun with these type of games i love the whole aspect of hiding things hidden information information gathering and then the added benefits of the expansion letting you go ahead and get allies letting you go ahead and get new powers ally powers new cards a board now instead of the entire tile placement which makes things a lot faster the game plays a lot quicker in that aspect and you just get to the table a lot more overall I really, really like Chaosmos the Temple. If you don't mind the fact that you might not know all the information you want to know throughout the game, or the fact that sometimes the die rolls in combat might not be to your liking, this is going to be a game I would strongly suggest checking out. The quality of the components, all the new aspects and features are great. Adding this expansion is not just more of the same, which in general is pretty good for most games. It's just like, oh, do you like the specific game? Well, here's an expansion that just gives you more extra cards, more extra this, and a little bit of a variant. This one basically changes the game up completely, adding new characters, new aliens, allies, unique abilities that happen on the Doom Clock, and a bunch of other content that you're going to get in the game, Chaosmos and Chaosmos the Temple. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, check it out down below. You can also watch us play the live stream from the original one, and we're going to do another live stream of the Temple pretty soon here. I'll have a link down in the description for you to go ahead and check out Chaosmos. I really like this game. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you're interested in Chaosmos and the expansion of the temple, go ahead and take a look down below. It's a game about deception, it's about conniving, and it's about hidden information. As long as you possibly can hide, the better you are. But there's a lot of combat, it's really aggressive. Also, check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We're giving away a ton of different board games. I think right now we're giving away the game Return to the Dark Temple, but that might be over by the time this video comes out. Regardless, there'll be something out for you there as well. And don't forget to also go ahead and check out our friends at MainBoardGames.com, The Giveaway Geek, and uh, Show Me How to Win, and <laughs> the Cardboard Stacker. I'll, I'll just put them all over here for you to go ahead and check out. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to finding the Ovoid without you next time.